It's been 40 years since the American Army blew up the Nuremberg Stadium swastika. A few minutes before that ceremony, a 22-year-old Texan, Lucian Adams, received the Congressional Medal of Honor. Heroes in movies do the kind of things Adams really did on a French battlefield in 1944. His Medal of Honor citation reads, despite intense machine gun fire, Adams made his way to within 10 yards of the closest machine gun and killed the gunner with a hand grenade. In all, Adams killed nine enemy soldiers and wiped out three machine guns single-handed. Like Adams, Audie Murphy also served in the 3rd Infantry. The man who was to become one of the war's most decorated heroes was rejected by the Navy and the Marines. We separate the men from the boys, but we like to have something to start with. Why don't you try the Army? Murphy played himself, later recreating the battle that won him the Congressional Medal of Honor in the movie To Hell and Back. He's got more guts and sense. That tank is loaded with gas and ammo. It'll blow up any minute. But after the war, the lives of these two Medal of Honor winners would take dramatically different directions. Lucian Adams returned home to Port Arthur, a hero who couldn't get a job. The remembrance, the remembrance of the war died out once the war was over. So uh, you were just an ex-serviceman, that's it. And the sooner you got lined up on a job, the better off you were going to be. But Americans couldn't get enough of Audie Murphy, the baby-faced soldier who killed an estimated 240 Germans. His exploits brought him a movie starlet wife and a career in Hollywood. Quite a change for the son of a Texas sharecropper who had never been to a city bigger than Greenville before joining the Army. He couldn't go anywhere without being recognized. And um, he had money. He could buy what he wanted. Adams finally landed a federal job after President Truman ordered the government to hire Medal of Honor winners. Forty years later, Adams still works for the Veterans Administration. Despite the fact his exploits have been recognized by three American presidents, so Lucian Adams is a modest man. So you make the less uh, effort and you hope to come out of it safe. To, and, but it's, a, it's, a, it, it's not an idea that you plan to come out of war as a hero. You don't plan on any medals. Uh, at any time that you're in, in combat. It is only a wish and a prayer that you have to come out alive. That same modesty is the hallmark of another Congressional Medal of Honor winner, Robert Gaylor. While a Marine fighter pilot defending the Solomon Islands, he shot down 11 enemy planes in a single month and with three fellow pilots attacked a fleet of 50 Japanese fighters and bombers. No question that many were braver and many did more things to deserve such a decoration. You have to represent and those individuals that didn't come back, those individuals that are disabled and still suffering from their wounds of uh, their experiences. Today, Lucian Adams is a proud grandfather living in San Antonio. Robert Gaylor is a Dallas businessman. Audie Murphy wasn't as lucky. He died in 1971 while on a plane trip trying to make one last business deal to stave off financial ruin. Like many heroes, he was more comfortable at war than in peace. His sister, Billy Bonner, still lives in Dallas. Because I really feel like that he is the last of the great American heroes. I don't feel like we really have a hero nowadays. Perhaps that's because the country isn't at war. It is war that generates the most heroes, and the absence of uncommon valor is one of the few negative byproducts of a nation not at war. David Margulies, Channel 8 News.